What's good, what's tea, and welcome back to the fifth episode of Not Another Talanoa. You know, the girls be talking um, Talanoas, but they also be talking smack. We're going to talk smack and not call it uh, Talanoa. This week, my guest is... Paige Finger. Period. And um, Paige is another good friend of mine. Sam from the last episode is also a mate. Um, and Paige and I go back to um, 2019. 2019 uni days. Jeez. Oh my gosh. I feel like we're just going to be having a chat like we always do. Yeah. Tonight. A good catch up. Um, Paige uh, currently works at MediaWorks in the partnerships team. Yes, partnerships team. You yeah. got it. Bang on. Um, but she was previously a journalist um, at Pacific Media Network, um, where she stayed for... Uh, just over two years. I was started off as a journalist and then moved to the 531 Breakfast Show as a producer. Wow. Yes, that is right. Um, how are you enjoying this new challenge at MediaWorks? You've gone mainstream and... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yes, they say once you go mainstream, you don't go back. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I've been loving it. I've been loving just the new challenge. I think PMN just set me up really well, nice solid foundation, and just helped me really refine my skills, ready for that mainstream industry. But you know me, I feel like as my career goes on, it will be a full circle moment. I'm going to get all my experience and knowledge and hopefully find a way to give back to our community. I'm sure I'll be back at PMN at some point. Mm. Not soon, but some point. <laughs> PMN is a very small organization compared to MediaWorks. And MediaWorks houses like how many radio stations? They all, I would say seven, but correct me if I'm wrong. I could list them off, but we'll save that for another yep. time. <laughs> but a lot of radio stations, they yeah. house a lot. Um, but PMN, yeah, it might be a small organization, but all the employees there, they're like a family. They have the biggest hearts. Mm. If you didn't know, um, PMN Pacific Media Network houses, um, 531 PI, which is kind of like a more serious adult, um, I would say like they're trying to move into that kind of talk back space for our older, um, Pacific generation, but we do have a lot of young teen ages that are, you know, like to listen to those, um, new current events yeah. type of talk back yeah. shows. And then also new FM for our yeah. youth. Yeah. Um, new FM, man, a station which had hosts like Oscar Kitely yes. at one point. Some yeah. Some of the greats, but we've got really great hosts there now. Shout out to my girl, Sia. Yeah. We've got the Morning Shack as well. The Henry. Yeah, so we've got some really amazing hosts there. Amazing. And MediaWorks, by comparison, has um, My FM, The yes. Edge. The Rock, the Rock George, George, Breeze, More FM. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I need to make sure I'm getting all of these right. <laughs> Just in case <laughs> my boss is like, hmm. But, yeah. Um, and a lot of big names, too. Like, these are kind of um, kind of New Zealand celebrities, I would say, some of the hosts. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You have um Robert Rackett here who started my FM. He's actually oh, now at the breeze, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So like it's been really cool being in a space where I'm just like, you know, they're my colleagues now. Where yeah. I used to just listen to the radio and really admire these people. Still do, but it's yeah, it's really great. Um, it's kind of a far cry because me and, yeah, as Paige said, me and Paige used to work together at AUT Uni mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, it's not radio, <laughs> not radio, but that was an awesome experience. I'm so glad we started off there because then I was able to meet you because yeah. we did, we did, um, the same degree, but just in different le- year levels. So if we didn't do that uni prep program at AUT, we would have never met. And we would have never been here, I reckon. No, I don't think we would have. Um, yeah, that was such a fun time. We, um, Yeah, uni prep is like a kind of transition program for mm-hmm. high school students, uh, high school students going into like work or study, so. And weren't they fun? Oh, wasn't that a ball? <laughs> <laughs> that was just amazing. Almost as stressful yeah. as journalism. I would say so. Um, Yes, it was a very stressful job, but rewarding too. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Just seeing, because I still keep in touch with some of the students that we would mentor and help navigate at the time. And they're just doing amazing, you know, completing their degrees. And I'm just like, it's awesome and such a privilege we were able to be part of their journey in that Mm. way, in a small way. So, yeah. Were you, are you from Auckland? I am from Auckland, um, but I did, I moved to Australia and did high school in Brisbane when I was 12. 
I believe. So when I came back, I had this like really thick Aussie accent and people just thought I grew up there my whole mm. life. But I feel like I'm just starting to get my Kiwi accent back. What do you reckon? Um, no, yeah, I can sense it. <laughs> you're like, yeah, no. <laughs> you got that twang. <laughs> Whereabouts in um, Auckland did you stay before you left to Brazil? West Auckland. So I'm actually oh. a Westie. Did my primary at Fruitvale Primary, then went to Glen Eden Intermediate. But then when I moved back, I stayed with my auntie and uncle and my nana, and they stayed out in Otara. So I experienced that South Auckland life, and I loved it. Not going to lie, I really um, miss, because I'm back at West Auckland, so I really miss living out south. That was really cool. Do you miss Oz, though? I miss my parents, who are in Oz. So Mm. yes, I do miss Oz, because my parents are there. And um, so I do plan to move back, maybe one day, to look after them, you know? The only girl. Mm. It's my response. Ability, which oh. I find a privilege. You know, if you're lucky, you'll find a man to take with you. Then. <laughs> hey, I'm taking applications. No. <laughs> um, what was your upbringing like, just quickly? You know, my upbringing, it, my parents really sheltered me from a lot of things. I think, especially um, in terms of culture, if we're talking about culture and just church life, that's what they grew up in. Very traditional Samoan households. However, I know like with their childhood they kind of were traumatized and like burnt by a lot of things growing up in that way so they really try to shout at me so I would say I grew up pretty westernized Mm. you know and pretty sheltered and blessed I'm not gonna sit here because I know a lot of um, people especially in our Pacific communities they didn't have the best upbringing and found life quite challenging but I must say my parents did an amazing job to shelter me from that lifestyle and really Raised me well, mm. I believe. Not saying that those who weren't brought up the same way I was wasn't raised well, but just in terms of my experience, I was. Yeah. Your parents did a good job with what they had, right? Hundred yeah. percent. You know, it wasn't easy for them, but they made do with what they had, and they've been able to bring um, put all three kids through uni. You wow! Know? So that's something to be proud of. Yeah. Short pages, parents. What inspired you to enter the media industry? Media the industry. beast of an industry. You know what's funny? Because after high school, my parents were like, you need to go to uni. And I applied and then I actually got an offer to go directly into uni in Sydney. Wow. But without telling them, it's naughty, I declined that offer because I was like, I'm not going to go. And then I just told my parents, told a small white lie that I was just going to I just deferred my offer. Mm. I was like, mom, you know, I've just been so tired from studying from high school. I deferred my uni offer. They were really disappointed. But why it was important for me not to rush into uni, because I actually didn't know what I wanted to do. Mm. So I got into Bachelor of Journalism at University um, of Sydney there. And then I took that year to really think of, okay, what are my strengths? And Mm. I realized I didn't have a lot. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, I don't have much except... I can talk. And then I was like, okay, what jobs can I get that require talking as your main strength? And that's when I looked into radio. Mm -hmm. And then it just so happened the timing, God's timing was perfect, that this community radio station in Brisbane called Fresh Crew Radio Mm -hmm. were looking for some Samoan youth to come on. And it was just in English to be one of their hosts. So I got into that. From there, that's when my passion for radio um, began. And then I started looking for courses that um, could refine my skills in radio. And that's when I went to Afters, which was in Sydney. Mm. So, yeah, that's like the long version. So that's how I got into the media industry, really just taking that year after high school to figure out what I wanted to do. And then just going to this community radio station, then applying for courses in that. So, yeah, and then the rest is history. Came back here yeah. to get a bachelor's degree, yeah. did an internship with PMN, um, became a journalist because that's what the internship was. Funny, funny that, eh? Because yeah. that's what you initially studied in Sydney. Yeah, I well, bet. that's what I turned down. Yeah. And then, you know what? When I got the role as a journalist, I was like, damn, I really should have done that degree in journalism because I had no idea what I was doing. But the Lord guided me <laughs> out of that job into the breakfast producing job. <laughs> Now I'm here at MediaWorks and the Partnerships team, yeah. Minas, we are going to talk more about what it's like to be a Pacific journalist right after this.
All right, so today I thought um, with Paige here, we could have a little talanoa about what it's like to be a Pacific journalist. So before I um, came to the Coconut and hosted this podcast, I worked at RNZ and TVNZ as a journalist. And obviously Paige has some experience at PMN, at PMN News as a journal. Um, for someone at home, take us into what the grind is like. The grind. So I stepped into this role as a journalist, not having a clue what journalism was. You know, for me, it was just a foot in the door in the industry. But when I was thrusted into this role with no experience, I just didn't realize the magnitude of what I was saying yes to. And it wasn't until I would actually go to these media conferences and not see myself there. And when I say myself, I didn't see any brown. It was very just Balangi dominated there. And as I, because I did the role for, I'm pretty sure a year and a bit, a year and a bit or close to two years. And in that time, I learned how the response, I didn't realize how massive that responsibility would be. Mm. You're in there. You are the basically the voice for our community, mm. especially when it comes to a major topic. You're at a media conference with all these journalists that are kind of asking middle class questions. Mm. When I say that, it's questions that will just impact the middle class of Aotearoa. Not really thinking about, okay, what about our vulnerable communities? What about the communities that are often silenced? What do they want to know from our ministers and politicians? So for me, it was a bit of pressure stepping into those, I guess, rooms and thinking, okay, what are the important questions? Because you're in that space and you might only get a chance to ask one or two questions, one question with a follow-up mm. because it's so cutthroat in there and it's such a serious scene when it's question time. You need to make sure the questions you are asking, uh, what your auntie or uncle or your grandpa or grand grandmother would want to know who's sitting watching that press conference or watching the news, you know, or what you're going to put in your article is going to actually make a difference to their life and educate them about what's happening in New Zealand and Aotearoa. So I think for me as a Pacific journalist, I just didn't realize the weight of responsibility heading into this. I think I was quite naive. Um, and, but in saying that, what I really loved about the role is that I got to meet a lot of people from our community. I got to be exposed to stories and upbringings that I wouldn't have been exposed to if I didn't come into this role. What it helped me with was broaden my perspective of life. I feel like before I came into this role, I was so self-centered. Like, mm. it was, you know, my world just revolved around me and what was affecting me and my mm. family and everything. But when I came into this role and I got to meet people in our community, mm. in the walks of life, in their struggles, and really understand and listen to it, I was like, oh my gosh. It made me become a more empathetic person as well, mm. a more understanding person. So I would say there are pros and cons to being a journalist, specifically a Pacific journalist, mm. especially if your angle is that Pacific angle yeah. as well. But yeah, because I know you were also in there and we would see each other quite a lot yeah. at the same event because yeah. you were at RNZ Pacific. Did you have kind of the same or what would you say? Um, oh, well, the year that we both became journos was the year that COVID began. And it was also the year of the um, general election. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> it was touch and go. Uh, yeah. It was touch and go. I think in, a good, in good ways and bad ways, it was um, probably the best orientation into journalism. Because you are really yes. thrust into that environment. And I think um, with everyone at home, journalism, the need for journalism just went up. So 100%. much, like no one ha had anything else to do other than to tune into the news. Hundred percent, a pandemic. We had never gone through that before. Yeah. So you're so right. As soon as I started Feb 2020, March, the pandemic happened. Yeah. Um, my mate Elijah and I. You would know Elijah. We both yeah. started at the same time. We were in that newsroom by ourselves a lot of the time because everyone was reporting from home, mm -hmm. and just having to pump out these stories like on an hourly basis because we were also doing news bulletins yeah plus writing articles yeah it is a beast that turnover time you have to be on all the time get chasing different angles as well you know yeah 
I would say that radio journalism is by far the hardest medium because it's on the hour. On so the there's a filing pressure. So just to give um, you guys at home like a behind the scenes um, glimpse into what it's like. So there's a news bulletin that happens at the start of every hour. So like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. And those bulletins are different every time. Yeah. Um, which means that you're always working into an hourly deadline. I thought uni was bad with deadlines and then I entered radio journalism and I was like, wow. And you're like, okay, for our one, it was a three minute bulletin, right? Yeah. But you don't realize how much work goes into that three minute bulletin. And then it's over and you're like, yay. Okay, next one. You have to get a fresh story every time and have a leading story. So 100% like that pressure and that turnaround was just a beast of a job you know so considering that um 2020 was the year of COVID and the election Mm -hmm. um were there any feelings of burnout in that year I don't think I felt it in the first year because what I was running on is adrenaline Adrenaline, you're going on adrenaline firstly I entered this and for me I was like okay I'm going to put my best foot forward into this um, role that I'm in and this is my first role in the industry and so I had that excitement and then it was just kind of go it's kind mm. of like a blackout right you mm. just get through it and then afterwards you're just kind of like okay that's settled so I don't think I had burnout I think it was the next year when things kind of just settled down we kind of had like a routine in place of how we would operate under lockdowns mm. and everything like that that's when I started to get fatigued because mm. we were going in and out of lockdowns And it's funny because, you know, we're also going through the pandemic, Mm. but we're having to work in it. We can't even process and take time to feel like, okay, how am I feeling about it? Mm. You know, I didn't have time to be feel fear about it. It's kind of like, you know what? Because you had to ring up a doctor and ask them what they thought. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) You know, I had to report on other people's fear, you know? I couldn't even process my own. So I think... Once I got through that first year and everything kind of settled it and we had our processes in place, that's when I started to feel it afterwards. And I was like, okay. And I would say at the time we didn't have a lot of journalists in our newsroom Mm. to really pump out the amount of work we wanted to Mm. because we had, we were serving what, 10 Pacific communities at PMN Mm. plus our 531 audience and also trying to make it digestible for our new FM audience as well. So just trying to create all this content that would cater to a wide range of people was also quite hard and difficult. Mm. But, uh, and I think we said it before, I don't regret going into that role. Mm. It really made me a better person, I would say. It's Mm. like cheesy as that would sound, it really did make me a better person and helped me grow Mm. a lot. And I don't think I would have been able to take on my next role as a producer if I didn't go through this or even my role I'm in currently, Mm. if I didn't go through that experience as a Pacific journalist. It really does ground you because the broadcasting and media industry, the broadcasting side in particular, Mm. I don't think it's as bad in print. It's ruthless. Yeah. Yeah. You know what else grounds you is our community. Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) You, You ask a dumb question. You, put something and you don't think about it because sometimes you know what you're just working right yeah. you forget that you sometimes you're reporting for people your community and you might add something really ignorant or it might not be balanced but your community will hold you, know, you know. accountable <laughs> and they will let you know and <laughs> you know it's savage but i love it as yeah. well because i love that accountability and i think that's the only way we can grow if we're corrected yeah. you know kindly yeah. Kindly corrected. Kindly, but yeah. Yeah, yeah but not the hate. hate. <laughs> oh, the hate, though. We, yeah, let's not talk about the hate. But yeah, that we did would get some constructive criticism here and there on our news articles or even as a producer in our interviews. So yeah, I love that our community can just keep us in check. But yeah. Would you still consider yourself a journalist now? Say if um, the Media Works newsroom needed you to hop on a story, do you, would you feel comfortable with? You, uh, of course, I would feel comfortable. I could definitely hop and get right back into journalism. And, you know, when I was leaving my 
um, when I was leaving PMN, the news director that I was under just said, you know, you'll never not be a journalist. Once yeah. you're a journalist, you kind of always have that. Yeah. Um, and you, because a journalist is just basically storytelling and yeah. reporting from a perspective. So I definitely could yeah. jump on into the Today FM news team and they're like, hey, we've got this story. Would I want to? Is it my passion? No. <laughs> no, it's not, but I could do it, yeah. 100%. And it depends, especially, it depends on what story I'm telling, you yeah. know? If they said, hey, we're down Pacific journos right now, we've got this story that we want you to cover in your, the Pacific community, of course. Yeah. Of course, because I might not be passionate about journalism, but I'm passionate about our people and making sure that they get the ac most accurate information they can get, mm -hmm. the most culturally sensitive way, because that's mm -hmm. what we're about. <laughs> As a journalist, mm -hmm. do you think the New Zealand journalism industry is racist? Is racist? Yes. Yes, I would say they yeah. are racist because just look at all the newsrooms that you have. Mm. And like, I'm thinking about Today FM. I'm not saying they're racist, okay? I'm just saying like Today FM, we've got, we've got the One News, we've got, what other News newsrooms? ZB, yeah, News Talk ZB, News Hub. And I would say they're racist because I don't think feel like those places are places where Pacific people can thrive or Maori people can mm. thrive or people of ethnic commun or backgrounds can really thrive, thrive in. And, and also the treatment yeah. of people there. I know, I know we were talking, you were at a place, I don't want to name the place and you yeah. just, could tell when you walked into that place was it inviting no it wasn't and i think um it's racism not only in the representation mm -hmm. of actual journos but yeah. also the stories that are told the um i don't know the headlines yeah the headlines that yeah 100 yeah, percent. because like you can still have brown journos and then your lead story be like about i don't know a uh, crime that went down in South Auckland. Yeah, you know? 100%. I think just how they word things as well. Yeah. But then it's a racist and it's ignorant. And what annoys me is a lot of the time they don't even want to learn from it mm. and be educated because I feel like, like I don't know everything in the world, right? Mm. And so I have, surely I have said something ignorant, you know, that could have offended someone, but I know I am open to learn and from that and if someone was to educate me why that was ignorant mm -hmm. i would happily change how i um conduct myself moving forward exactly. right but what i feel here is like journalists or news companies they will do an article with a headline or something that is so racist blatantly racist exactly. you'll have the community try and really hold you accountable hey this is why have actual points point a point b of why this was racist mm -hmm why you need to change and they completely ignore it yeah and i think that's just not okay and that's a culture i really want to change and that's why there's cadetship programs that mm -hmm. are coming up that are ushering more pacific and maori journalists into the space because i feel like that's where we're going to see that change might not be right now mm -hmm. but in the future i feel like there's a positive change coming in that space i suppose for me um there's a lot of race baiting that goes on and so, just for an example, um, a couple years ago, a News Talk ZB host, Heather Duplessis Allen, she was talking about um, the Pacific Islands Forum. And um, she said that the Pacific Islands are leeches because they yeah. suck money, quote unquote, out of New Zealand. And she's still on air. She still has her job. Um, and I think that speaks to the um the norm in journalism that you can say these things and you can get away with it look who's hosting the breakfast show of news talk zb mike hosking who says maori like even little things like that it's um it's unfair it's their I think. unwillingness to learn and to yeah. change and also just there i feel like the balangi system that we live in yeah they're very forgiving towards their own people oh, most definitely you know, like, oh, they apologize, let it go, it's yeah. okay, move on. Any story about 
you know our own community that gets blasted everywhere it gets overhyped and everything so yeah i think we need to hold them accountable to the same degree we hold our own people accountable as well but mm. who knows when we'll see that change happen mm. i think it also comes down to representation at all levels so it's just not presenters like mm -hmm. i feel like um the reason why we have all these headlines is that there's producers behind the scenes who make these editorial decisions um, kind of um, in spite of our pupils mm -hmm. um, so you need representation at each level 100% what is that saying that I was told when I because I've been doing governance training as well it's like if you're not at the table you're on the menu yeah. you know so we wow. need to pull a seat at that table so we are not on that menu that the Balangs just love eating yeah. up eh? nothing about us without us is <laughs> yeah. another saying um <laughs> Wow, what an interesting insight into Pacific journalism. Um, would you ever go back? You know, I'm not ever going to say never. I would never go back because mm. I never thought I would even get into journalism yeah. So in the first place. So I would say I'm open. Would I, is that on my um, path right now to get back into it? No, it isn't. But I would leave it open. And I'm glad I have those skills just in case. Mm. Maybe when I'm a bit older or if the space isn't changing, I might need to just go back in there and shake things up, eh? Yeah. Hold those politicians accountable. <laughs> Stop dodging my question. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe. Oh, uh, yeah. I think about that sometimes when I go back to journalism. Yeah, would you? Because um, you're a great journalist. Every time you I, are too. No, every time I saw you in an event, I'm like, okay, it's all good if my article's mediocre. You've got your... <laughs> RNZ Pacific's got it. No, <laughs> I think that, um, yeah, the door's always open, isn't it? But, um, yeah. Depends who opens the door, eh? And uh, who's the behind the door. <laughs> They're all like, maybe. <laughs> you know you know. Most definitely. Yeah. Um, finally, on Pacific Journalism... Um, what would be your kind of little pieces of advice for like cadets or like people in high school who are looking at studying this path? I think hold your own in that space. You're going to walk into spaces as a journalist and feel quite intimidated. But you just need to remember your purpose of why you're being there. Make sure you have a passion. Like for me, yes, I didn't have a passion for journalism, but I had a passion for our people. So find that passion and your why in that space. And when you enter it, hold your own, you know, the person standing next to you isn't better than you. They're not less than you. You guys are all equal in that space, trying to get your question across and tell that story for your people. So just really hold your own space, um, hold your own in that space. And like we were talking about before, imposter syndrome, mm try get rid of those thoughts don't don't that's not true that is false you know being having an imposter syndrome you are there for a reason god put you in that position for a reason and just really trust that process thank you so much to Paige, and we'll see you in our next episode until then stay safe take care bye